The vast ocean holds many deep secrets. Sometimes, where great waters meet, a curious line appears. It seems as if two different seas touch, yet refuse to blend. One side might be a deep, churning blue, the other a lighter, perhaps cloudier shade of green or grey. This visible boundary often amazes sailors and travellers alike. It is a striking reminder of the ocean's complex nature. We see this in places like the Gulf of Alaska. Nature paints a vivid picture there. Many people wonder why this happens. Water is water, after all. Surely it should mix easily, like stirring milk into tea? The truth is the oceans are far from uniform. They are dynamic. They are constantly moving and changing. The clear line we sometimes observe is not an impenetrable wall. It is more like a slow dance, a hesitant meeting of waters. These waters carry different stories, different properties from their long journeys. This makes their immediate mixing a slow, gradual process. The world's oceans cover most of our planet. They seem like one continuous expanse of blue, yet each ocean, and even parts of oceans, can have its own character. The Atlantic has its own rhythms, the Pacific has its own moods. These differences are born from many factors. Sun, wind, rain and the shape of the land all play their part. These differences are the very reason why they sometimes appear to separate. Understanding this is to understand the ocean's heart. In this exploration, we will journey into these differences. We will look beneath the surface at the unseen forces. We will learn about the powerful currents that flow like rivers. We will discover how warmth and coldness create divides. We will also see how saltiness plays its crucial role. It is a fascinating story of physics and chemistry. It is a story unfolding on a grand oceanic stage. The ocean always has more to teach us. Within the great oceans there are mighty rivers. These are not rivers of fresh water but currents of seawater. They flow for thousands of miles unseen from the surface. These currents are driven by winds, by Earth's rotation and by differences in water density. They carry enormous volumes of water across the globe. Some are warm, moving from the tropics. Others are cold, flowing from the polar regions. These currents are the ocean's great arteries. They shape our world in profound ways. These powerful currents can act like invisible walls or gatekeepers. Imagine two large rivers of air meeting in the sky. They do not always mix instantly. Similarly, when two ocean currents with different origins meet, their waters resist blending. One current might be colder and saltier, the other might be warmer and fresher. These distinct water masses tend to slide past each other, or one might flow above or below the other. This creates the boundaries we sometimes observe. A clear example is the Antarctic Circumpolar Current. This is the largest ocean current on Earth. It flows eastward all the way around Antarctica. It is a formidable stream of cold, dense water. This current effectively separates the frigid Southern Ocean from the warmer waters of the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans to its north. It acts as a colossal barrier, limiting the exchange of water. This helps maintain Antarctica's unique icy environment. It is a true giant of the ocean. Ocean currents do more than just separate waters. They are vital for our planet's health. They transport heat from the equator towards the poles. This helps regulate global climate, making Earth habitable. They also carry nutrients, supporting marine life in distant regions. So, while they can create divisions, they're also essential connectors. Their boundaries are dynamic zones full of life and activity. The ocean's circulation is a constant, powerful force. Water temperature is not the same everywhere in the ocean. The sun warms the surface waters near the equator. These waters become quite warm. In contrast, the polar seas receive little sunlight. Their waters are very cold, sometimes near freezing. The Atlantic Ocean stretches from the Arctic to the Antarctic. The Pacific Ocean is the largest and deepest. Both oceans have vast areas of warm and cold water. These temperature differences play a big role in how waters interact. Warm water behaves differently from cold water. Warm water expands slightly. This makes it less dense or lighter. Cold water contracts. This makes it denser or heavier. When warm and cold waters meet, the colder, denser water tends to sink. It will flow beneath the warmer, lighter water. This creates layers in the ocean, much like layers in a cake. These layers do not mix easily or quickly. It is like trying to mix oil and water, though the effect is much more subtle in the sea. Consider a place where a current from a warm region meets a current from a cold region. 
This often happens where the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans interact, especially in the turbulent southern latitudes. One ocean might bring cool water from near the poles. The other might carry sun-warmed water from the tropics. This significant difference in temperature creates a thermal barrier. The waters hesitate to merge. They form a front, a zone of transition. This creates the visible line sometimes seen from ships or planes. This separation caused by temperature is not permanent or absolute. Over time, mixing does occur. Waves, winds and tides stir the waters. Heat is slowly exchanged between the layers. The sharp line we might see on the surface is often just the most visible part of a more complex three-dimensional boundary. Deep below, the waters are always in slow conversation, but the immediate visual contrast can be very striking. It speaks to the distinct thermal energies these great oceans carry. Besides temperature, another vital property of seawater is its saltiness or salinity. The amount of dissolved salt varies from place to place in the oceans. Some parts of the Atlantic Ocean are known to be saltier than many parts of the Pacific. This difference in salinity arises from several factors. Rates of evaporation play a role. When water evaporates, salt is left behind. The input of fresh water from rivers and melting ice also reduces salinity. These processes create a patchwork of saltiness across the seas. Just like temperature, salinity affects the density of seawater. Saltier water is denser than less salty or fresher water. This is because dissolved salts add mass to the water. So when waters with different salinities meet, the saltier, denser water will tend to sink. It will flow beneath the less salty, lighter water. This creates another form of layering in the ocean. This layering based on salinity also resists quick mixing. It contributes to the distinctness of different water masses. The combined effects of temperature and salinity determine the overall density of seawater. Scientists refer to this as thermohaline circulation, thermo for heat, haline for salt. Cold and salty water is the densest. Warm and fresh water is the least dense. When the Atlantic and Pacific meet, they often bring waters with different temperature and salinity profiles. These differences in density are a primary reason why they don't mix readily. It is a delicate dance of heat and salt. These two factors often work together to keep water masses separate for a time. So, the fascinating line observed between oceans is often a meeting point. It is where waters of significantly different densities encounter each other. It is not a solid, unyielding wall, but rather a zone of slow, gradual mixing. Understanding these phenomena, currents, temperature and salinity, helps us appreciate the ocean's vast complexity. It reminds us how these immense bodies of water are interconnected, yet wonderfully distinct. The sea is always revealing new wonders to those who look closely. It holds endless stories within its depths.